Hey everybody, it's Harry from Slap Your Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. If you love steak and you have an event coming up like a July 4th, a backyard potluck, a camping trip or a tailgate, here's an easy way to prepare some steaks using what I call Harry's Happiness in a Bag where you show up with a bag of marinated steak, toss it on the grill, and sear it to perfection and impress your friends and family. About two tablespoons of Worcestershire, half cup of balsamic vinegar, quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, as much garlic or as little garlic as you like, Two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, heaping tablespoons. All right, we're gonna cut it into about inch and a half steaks. Thanks to the nice folk at epicmeat.com for sending these beautiful prime grape ribeye medallions. And you can see from the uh, marbling, these are absolutely amazing. These are the ribeye steaks that have the spinalis dorsi or the rib cap trimmed off and they are designed for folks who want a little bit less fat in their ribeye. These are superbly tender. They're kind of like a filet mignon, but it comes from the eye of the rib. So they're really, really good eating, very tender, has a little bit more texture than the tenderloin. Some people find the tenderloin is a little bit too soft, but this is the perfect cut to actually grill some really wonderful tasting steaks. The seasoning with some of my Slap Your Daddy, first place Mula beef rub. So there you have it, Harry's Happiness Steak in a Bag. And you can literally take this anywhere you want. You can put it in a cooler, take it to a tailgate, take it to a campsite, take it to a potluck. And uh, you want, we want to marinate it for about at least an hour to get the flavors to melt. The thicker the steak, the longer you need to marinate it. And also, if you want to make sure that the salt content is not so high, you can put less rub. If you like it more salty, go ahead and put more rub on it. Let's get ready to smoke our prime ribeye medallions. We're gonna put in a Daniel Boone GMG. I'm gonna run it around 200 degrees, kinda get a nice even smoke on it and show you guys how to get a nice char after we complete the smoking phase. This has been sitting in the refrigerator. An hour is good, a little longer is probably better. We wanna put the ribeye medallions in the pit, get some nice smoke. And we want to cook it to about 110 degrees and then I'll give, give it a sear. Once it hits 110, take about 45 minutes. After we smoke the steaks at 200 degrees to get the internal temperature of about 100, 110, we're going to finish them on a cast iron pan tonight because uh, this is uh, from the nice folks at Field Company. They sent me one of their very, very special cast iron pans. This is a special pre-seasoned pan that is extremely durable. It's super lightweight and this company is a has a history of creating very innovative field cookware products. We're gonna season it by just warming up under low heat to kind of get the uh, surface to get seasoned, apply some oil, season it, and then after that, we're going to go ahead and sear our steaks after they come up to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, our steaks are beautifully smoked, about 110-ish. Okay, all right, let's go. Let's go get a sear on the cast iron pan. About a minute on each side, kind of get a nice crust. Give a hot pan for that. All right, you want to cook it until it's uh, to your liking. Whether you like 125, 128, 132, it's kind of up to you. I'm just going to go for a few that are medium rare and one that's a kind of medium-ish, warm medium thick center. Let's prepare some uh, tomatoes to go with our steak. A bit of uh, garlic here. A bit of olive oil. I like to start the pan cold so the uh, garlic has a chance to warm up. And I like my uh, tomatoes sort of al dente. Just gonna give it a nice 
sear here. Not really a sear, kind of warm up in the oil. Maybe a garlic flavor. Simple seasoning. The SPG. Salt, pepper, garlic. Once you cook the rawness or the spiciness out of the raw garlic, just finish out a little bit of butter. And a little bit of parsley, and we're done. Super simple. I'm gonna make some uh, cheesy polenta to go with my steak tonight. Add some uh, polenta to some water. I'm gonna add some milk and a little bit of butter at the end. And I round it up and season it. Touch of milk. Once you have the polenta nicely stirred and smooth, it's gonna touch it up with some butter. Just melt it one pat at a time, kind of give it a little luxurious coating. Make the polenta very much kind of silky and smooth. Just to combining some good technique. I'm gonna add the cheese at the end to kind of give it a nice cheesy polenta flavor. So polenta, for those of you not aware, is cornmeal common in Italy and eaten around the world. In the US, it's called grits, but the way you make it, uh, it's kind of different. Uh, we sometimes it's baked into cakes and uh, cut into pieces and served as a little kind of a hockey puck. Sometimes it's served as kind of like mashed potatoes. So today we're going to do kind of a creamy polenta version with a little bit of cheese. Add a second pat of butter. So you notice I'm whisking in the butter, incorporating it slowly so that it releases the oils. Adding sufficient liquid to kind of get it at the right consistency. You want it a little bit watery because after you finish cooking polenta, it'll actually thicken up. So kind of like oatmeal. After a while, oatmeal sits, it gets a little thicker. With polenta, it's the same thing. So you'll finish runny, but once you let it rest, it'll thicken up. Let's add the cheese and you can put your favorite cheese. I recommend you don't salt it until after you finish adding the cheese because the cheese is salty. You don't want your creamy polenta, cheesy polenta to be too salty at the end. As much or as little cheese as you like. Okay, check for seasonings. Super delish. Just needs a touch of salt. Touch of black pepper. I just like to add my secret ingredient, just a little hint of nutmeg. Just a little bit goes a long way. I know test. Absolutely delicious. And if you watch my video so far, uh, I'm going to show you a secret ingredient I add to make my polenta extra special. This is just mushroom powder because it has umami flavor. Top secret, don't tell anybody about it. So if you watch this on my video, just let you know that this is my secret ingredient. So for those of you fast forwarded, you missed this part. Taste again. Absolutely superb. After resting the steak, you can go ahead and get ready to slice it. This piece here, absolutely gorgeous crust. Perfect medium pink. And another one here. It's also pretty good. It's a little bit more rare. So we've got four steaks with four levels of goodness to please your guests. I think that uh, this is kind of a warm medium pink center. And these two are a little bit less done. I want to say probably rare. This one here looks super juicy, right? Yeah. This one's also rare. So you have four steaks with four different doneness for your guests' eating pleasure. Do the taste test here. Slice this one. It's absolutely gorgeous. Taste test. Super delicious. That balsamic glaze together with the marinade in the refrigerator for over an hour really help. Crust is absolutely salty. The meat is kind of a little bit smoky, so uh, not very smoky, but just enough smoke to give it a hint that it's done in the pit. Let's try the next piece. This one is the one that's more done. Looking good. I don't know this one better. It's a little bit more done. Let me try a rare piece here. That's pretty rare. This one's the one that's more rare. Also very good.
little bit of uh, steak love for Mr. Beans. Thanks again to Epic Meat Company for providing these beautiful prime great ribeye medallions. Also to Fuel Company for providing the cookware that I used to sear the steaks. We got a perfect char on it. So Mr. Beans, sorry no brisket today, but maybe this is something better. We have some ribeye medallions. I hope you like it. Here we go. He's trying it out the polenta, cheesy polenta. Tasting the steak. Second piece of steak. Will he eat the polenta? Yes, he will. Uh, what about a tomato? I don't think so, but who knows. Like it, Beans? Super. All right, well, Beans is finishing up. I uh, hope you guys like this episode. It was a fun cook for something that you can take to a potluck, camping, or tailgate. Just happiness in the bag. You can use steak, you can use any other meat you want. I'd like to do a shout out for my Patreons for helping me keep the channel going. And to all my YouTube subscribers, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you guys in the next video.